I'd like to welcome one of our sponsors, Matthew's Pizza. Matthew's Pizza has been recognized for the last 30 years as one of the top pizzas in the country by USA Today, by the Washington Post, New York Times, Travel Channel, you name it. There's a, a dish he has, it's called the Leroy. It's mozzarella, it's tomatoes, it's artichokes, it's olives. Uh, it's got brilliant food. Matthew's Pizza is located at 3131 Eastern Avenue in Highland Town. If you don't know about it now, go down there and check it out. If you do know about it, go back down. Hi, this is uh, Tim Whitman with the Espresso Soccer Show. Today, my guest is Pete Karinji. Pete Karinji goes way back. Pete, when were you born? Way 1945, back. right? No, no. 46. Keep going. Come oh, on. he's up Man, there in the he's 50s. He's making me a lot older. <laughs> Pete's been around forever. He actually coached me when, oh, well, 14. Yeah. 14, 15, 15 16. 16. Is that what it was? But yeah. I played two years, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember 14, dropping 15. me off? Yeah, yeah. He dropped me. He used to pick me up because I, I didn't have a car at that time because uh, I was 14, and parents didn't drive. My father was working nine to five. So Pete and a, a couple friends, you remember Tommy, Tommy Caranta? Tommy, yeah. Tommy Caranta used to pick me up back and forth. And then uh, 15, 16, who was it, Mr. Tom? Was yeah. it, what was, I never knew what Mr. Tom was. Was Mr. Tom the coach, the head coach? Was he the promoter? Was he Mr. the Tom investor? Mr. Tom was one of the, uh, yeah, one of the sponsors and obviously an avid fan. And, uh, you know, he had a, a great passion for the game, which obviously has come down to his kids and his grandchildren. But... Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was a big advocate for uh, the Pompeii Soccer Club. I, can, I remember, do you remember when we went on a bus ride and there was a little fight in the back between Petey Batillas and I don't know, it was Stevie, right? And Mr. Tom got up and I was getting, looking to get involved. Mr. Tom walks by and goes, <laughs> goes sit down. And I went, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm out there because I'm 14 years old, and I'm thinking, yeah. "Oh my God, Mr. Tom walked by," and that was the end of that because he had a little bit of a reputation, didn't he? Well, when you're when you're that age, uh, you know, any parent that comes up and tells you to sit down, you're well, probably, and he was a little different. He was very, very, yeah. very uh, <laughs> that's right, physical guy, and, and had a uh, bit of a reputation. And he was, uh, you know, he, like I said, his his passion for the game is uh, is something that's missed really because uh, he just loves soccer, and I think that carried over to all his his family for sure. Yeah. Pete's done uh, loads of uh, interviews before and they always go back to Highland Town, Highland Town, Highland Town, right? Uh, and when I got to a certain point in my career, like I was at Little Flower, right? Then I went to, uh, where was it? Dundalk, Lutherville. But then when I went to that next level is when I went to Highland Town and started playing. And uh, it was like a different, for me, because I was just trying to fit in. And there was all these players I used to play against who didn't really like me at the time, right? We're going to get you. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Because they were rivalries at the time. But once I went there, I, I felt, I, I can still remember this today. I was kind of in the midfield position. Uh, the ball came to me, beat some guy, looked up, played it, and we scored. And I thought, God, this is easy. Yeah. The game is now easy because it was played a little different. And there were very good players. And I thought, before, you're doing it all by yourself. Yeah. Knock it to Timmy, right? He'll try to score. He'll try to do this. Then I felt there was more of a team thing. I thought, this is pretty cool. And I, I still remember this. I still remember this to that day. And I thought, ah, this game is pretty simple this way, right? So, I mean, that was, what, 14? I'm um, yeah. 57? Yeah, you. Right? Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's the better players that you're around, as you've seen throughout your career. Um, it just seems like it comes easier, you know. And so you, when you're a young player and all of a sudden you're surrounded by good players and everybody's trying to make their little bit of mark. But, you know, I think when a guy like Timmy Whitman came down and played at the school lot, played for Pompeii, um, there was so much respect there. And, you know, you're always rivals. And then once That's you right. get the player to come play for you, um, it's, man, we got them. And uh, your friendships are, are, you know, to this day, uh, guys talk about days when you play for Pompeii it's and funny. you know any any bar in Baltimore and I you just get together. Saw the, I saw everybody down yeah, uh, everybody Liquid talk, Assets, down Ocean City. Yeah, right? everybody I just saw talk everybody. about the old days and uh, you know that, that's the great thing about Baltimore soccer is that there's all these you know at times it's rivals and at times now that we sit back and talk about the old days. Um, it's kind of kind of funny to talk about, but you know what what great memories. Oh my that's gosh. what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, 
who do you think, right, from, I shouldn't say that, I said, the difference between now, right, and back then, not just in Highland Town, but players in general, are they better now, you think, or are they, this conversation comes up all the time, and people will ask me, right, me, personally, I think players are probably, have a better, cut, so who do you think, players now? or back then were better? Well, I think that's a great question and it's often asked. I think players um, technically were better back then um, for me because I think the, the, you talked about the school lot. Um, you don't, we can both go right now and ride all around Baltimore City and we're not gonna find kids playing soccer right now. And we're gonna find kids out on the street playing basketball, um, but we're not gonna find them playing soccer. But yet, when we talk about those days, that's all, if you went down, Herring Run Park, mm -hmm. all you guys were playing. If you went down to School Lot or Patterson Park, there was nonstop. Didn't matter the weather, didn't matter the heat. We were down there playing every day. So you got guys like, you know, Sonny Askew, um, Ernie Cox, who were unbelievably technical players. They weren't coached. They never had coaches. Right, right. They didn't, they didn't have parents running up and down the sideline, but all they did all day was like you. I mean, I, you're one of the more technical players that ever came out of this area. All you did was continue to work on your game. You weren't overcoached. Um, so I think that that is one of the reasons why um, back then, you know, it, it was, I think the, the players were developed that way. And all over Europe and, you know, South America, you see, it all the time, you, know, you, you see the Brazilian yeah. players. Everybody talks about the Brazilian players. Everybody talks about street soccer. We lived that. Mm -hmm. We lived street mm -hmm. soccer. We played, you know, when you came down the school lot, there was a fence about this big. And if you didn't keep the shot low, Right, you know, going, it went yeah, over and like hit somebody's window. And so you had to constantly uh, work on your, your thinking about what you're doing. There's no, no referees, no coaches, no parents. Um, and it was a great atmosphere. So I think we need more of that, and we've gotten less of that okay. because of, as you know, uh, the way the system works now. But here, I think there's more players now, right? Clearly. I think there's a lot of good players, right? I think... Just with the exposure, television. Back when I was, I, a guy had a radio. You had to try to tune in. It was coming over from England, one of those long distance radios. We didn't have to, I'm at the television to watch yeah. that, that we went three channels, four channels, yeah. right back then. So I think the kids have more of a clue. Back when I was playing at Cal, I'll just give an example. When I was playing at Calvert Hall, when you played at Calvert Hall, uh, I didn't see this intricate type of knocking the ball around that much, right? You didn't see that, right? Uh, backs were backs, right, in a sense, right? Midfield was midfield. And sometimes, do you remember when you were real young, you had five forwards almost, right? right. The three in the middle. First year and I there wasn't that, that, that exchange at intricacies, the moving, the, the overlappings. There wasn't that much. It came a little bit. I remember diagonal runs a little bit. But as far as the other stuff, that wasn't there. So I think the game is... is is better today, right? They're exposed to more, the kids are. They see uh, the Premier League on every Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they, they have a clue. Coaches have a clue, right? I think they have more of a clue now. But, but, so you take the kids back then, right, when we were growing up, or even when you were growing up, uh, there, there was none of that. So they, they weren't exposed to certain things, but, they had the desire, they had something there more so than some of these kids. Today, it's, it's, it's so commercial. Mother <laughs> Is that him? Wait, he can't be real. Hey, are you nuts? Are you nuts? I just told you I'm on television. Uh, I'm done. I'm done, stop calling me. I can't believe this phone won't go off. <laughs> Wait. Is that him again? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me I'll about leave it. Leave him live. Uh, Why don't we put him on? <laughs> he can report live. From, is he watching the game? No, he's telling me a trade happened. <laughs> Wait. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's the greatest. <laughs> that's the greatest call ever. Did you get some of it? Are you nuts? <laughs> Okay, wait, wait. Oh, keep it. You got to keep this going. Hold on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was the greatest call ever. He said, you're not. 
crazy. Uh, Bleep some of the Fs out, okay? Uh, we'll leave some leave. of it. Got, yeah, but uh, anyway, where the hell were we at again here, Morgan? On, let me get my, Morgan, you got Morgan, this, right? Let me get my Wait, out. I need my espresso. Okay. Oh, we, right, never, we never hosted. I, you never. Okay, in the middle of the show, you ready? Here, cheers, Pete. Espresso show. Not espresso, espresso. Thank you. Mm. Man, is that good? Mm. You brought, Roger is white. Oh, you're drinking all. Okay. You brought the good stuff. Yeah, in. I did, man. This is all I need. I, do you think I'm wound up before? Okay. Are we ready? Morgan, back at you. Turn the camera around so you can see you. No? Okay. All right. Where were we at now? But anyway, the kids had more desire then. Today, it's so commercialized. They think they can go out for, you know, a couple days a week, right, play with their club team, and they're going to become a pro. Because they see it, and they think that's what they're going, they want to do. They think they want to do. I'll give you a little example. I'm training this one, this one boy, uh, and actually, he wants to become. I said, first thing I did, I said to him, because his, his dad thinks he, he's going to become a pro or whatever he wants mm -hmm. him to become. But whatever, that's right, okay. Right, right, right. Uh, and I told him, I said, what do you want to do? He says, well, I want to become a professional. I said, you sure? Right? I said, you absolutely sure? He says, yeah. I said, well, I'm going to tell you this right now. Right? I said, here's what it takes. And I gave him examples. I said, it's every day, right? It's thinking about it when you go home. Uh, it's giving up certain things, right, to become the, the top pro, uh, sure. become a pro. And it's not just you make this team and you think you're, that's it. It's constant, right? And I don't think kids realize that where what you're talking about on the, on the lot and down at Heron Run Park, down at different areas, uh, no one told them to go there. No. And the kids that would go there every day, every day, and they would have to, they would have to... They were told to get off by the right, police. Right, that's right. Yeah. We have to leave. You've got yeah. to come in. It's dinner. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't want to, I want to go back. I yeah. want to go over here. Yeah. Uh, I think they actually figured the game out a lot on their own. Oh, yeah. But here's my question to you. For me, okay, I, this is all personal, right? I'm just giving you, I'm, that's not a right or wrong. Right. I'm just giving you uh, different things from my perspective, what I went through and so on, so what you're going through. Uh, what if... I had a coach like you, a good coach constantly, right, that could say, okay, why don't I and, gear, and put me in this path? What if I had some coaches from Europe or that taught me uh, with everything else that, that was going on in my career, right? If everything else was going on and I had that extra bit, what if somebody had that? Uh, where would they be then? Because I can remember learning things from other players, right? And even when I went pro, there was maybe one or two players would say, listen, well, how about this? How about that? I can remember this little drag move, right? When no one was doing this guy, Peter Barowich, right? Said, try this. It was like a revelation. I, but if I would have known that when I was 12, 13, 14, whatever it is, then I don't know what the possibilities would have been for me or kids in that situation. Well, I think, if, I think you hit it on the head. I think if you combined the passion and what kids back then loved to play with the knowledge that we have today. Because as you said, um, I wasn't really coached. As a kid, you know, I, I was, I played, we loved playing. You learned a lot on the field. You learned playing against older players. Um, you can never take away back then, um, when I was 12 years old, I was playing down the lot against 14, 15 year old mm -hmm. guys. So when I went to high school or college, I never looked at the older players is a big deal. I was down there playing against guys yeah, they were intimidating. who, who, who were right. going to go play pro or were playing pro. You know, when Paul Skirty played on the national team and was playing pro, I was down there playing with us and I was in high school. I That's wasn't intimidated by anybody at Calvary. You loved it. But, but what you said is today with the, with the knowledge and the coaching, the coaching is way better than it's ever been. People are getting their license. People are getting educated because the power of the internet, we see more information. I mean, when I was coaching, first started coaching, a lot of stuff was just trying or seeing things. Now, a lot of these coaches, mm. um, they're getting paid big money, but they're also just going on the, on the internet and finding exercise or drills and have no concept of how that works. But, so I think if you combine back then the, the love of the sport, because a lot of kids nowadays get burnt out on soccer because, as you said, you wanted to be a pro. I, I know your dad. I know your family. You had all good soccer players in there, but no one sit there and said, you have to be a pro, right? You went out there and loved playing. So if we could sit there when you were 12 years old and you had a really good, you probably had, like we all had, 
someone from the area who became that's a right, coach that's right. and they never probably played, you, and didn't that's play, right. and they drove you. Um, and right. they were organizers, and they and look, they we love those guys because they were there was all a need. There great was a need, people. Right. As right. a need, and and we have great memories of them. But there wasn't really a strictly a guy like your knowledge now. So if you coach an under twelve team now, look at the knowledge they're going to gain <laughs> from your experience versus what you had. So I think what would be to, what's the combination? Well, well, so the, the answer I, is the combination of. One is having coaches, knowledgeable coaches, coaching these kids. because But there's so many clubs, there's so many teams out there, and I think U.S. soccer has to get more involved because as we're looking, even here locally, we have a lot of great teams, got a lot of great, great mm -hmm. clubs. We have a lot of coaches. We have more coaches now and a lot of people, full-time coaches, that are making a living off of it. Back then, nobody made a living off of no one, that's coaching right. you never got or paid. training. That's right. that's nobody right. trained, trained anybody. That's right. That's you right. trained by going down to the playing against the older players. So, so those days are over, mm. obviously, because we don't go to the parks and the school lots like we used to. Pa families just don't do it. Yeah, it'll so, so that's changed. But more importantly, um, we got to get – and we, as you said, you, you say about the games being on TV, I remember when we had to go – we took two loads from Hollandtown and drove over to D.C., to watch a game on closed circuit, a World Cup game. Mm. Now every game is on TV. Now the World Cup is it's a it's a United States event. It, they love big sporting events. Sure. So people right, love it. Right, right. But but back then you talk we were like almost like a cult. We're getting in a car, driving to go watch a right. soccer game <laughs> in DC, right. downtown DC and all foreigners and us and you know all guy all guys who were successful soccer players, but we loved that. We wanted to go watch the game. Now every game is on TV and and now kids are brought up as you said watching TV every weekend, every country, Italy, Germany, England. I mean, you know, every bar is packed now with people watching the Premier League. Big world of difference than when we grew up. So it's gotten bigger. It's gotten better. More people involved. Um, it should be better. There's, there's it should be better. So why, then, the why, again, why isn't it better with all that? The, so when you're looking for a player, okay, when you look for a player as a college coach, I mean, Pete's yeah. Been around for college, UMBC, has great team, coach of the year, right, in the, in the nation. So what do you look for? So they have all this exposure. Kids, everybody's supposedly good. you got to see this kid juggle. This kid can do this. This kid can do this. But when you see him on the, on the, on the ground, right, when you see him playing, what do you look for? Because the game itself is very, very subjective, right? When you're a coach, very subjective. I played for coaches that would coach the way they played. Sure. And to me, it's one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a coach. Sure. Okay, that's, a, again, this is my personal view. Uh, because then it limits you, right? If you played one particular way and you didn't play another way and another way and another way, or, don't, or not knowledgeable or you're stubborn about it, uh, or you just don't know, then I think that's going to hurt you, right, as, as a coach. Uh, so what do you look for when you see a player? I mean, I have ideas. I don't know what you, being around with all your knowledge, what do you see? Well, the first thing I'm looking for when I go watch kids play is, is are they out there competing while they're playing? A sense of, you know, they're just not out there because mom and dad took them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, as we were talking about, there's a lot of kids that are, are um, getting burnt out on the game as young players because it's not something that they really want to do. So when I go to a game, um, I have an open mind. It's because there's some people that will say, well, he plays like this. I, I'm wide open. I, I, obviously, I love players who have a little flair. I love players who like to take players on, who are comfortable with the ball. I, I love players who want to win. I love players, most importantly, is I love players who want to get better and they want to be part of a team. It's not about me because in this era of selfies sure, and everything is sure me, right. Um, I don't think you can build a team around me players. So I'm always kind of conscientious of that. Like this player is coming. Hey, I, I don't want to take away his. What look, about when, if I watch I, back when you were a young player and I went to watch you play? Automatically, I go, I want that player. That's the kind of guy I want. He's very good. He's technical. He wants to win. He's competing. Um, what about Neymar? I hate to throw that out there, but I what would, about I, Neymar? I, I meant, I, go ahead. Well, it, it's the, the interesting thing about Neymar is if you look at him on paper, obviously from a teammate standpoint, you have to struggle with certain aspects. But I love the fact that he can, the things that he can do with the ball. 
Um, so I, as I sit here today, if I could get a Neymar, I'd put him on my team. You would. But, but I'd obviously I, I would want to have a discussion with him to say this is what we want to do, and if he's not on the same page, then we couldn't have a Neymar. But I would definitely take a Neymar. I, mean, take, I, would, I, would, take, I would take 10, 11 Neymars, and I would win. But, but you could you – see, this is – that's that's interesting in a sense. You can't. I don't think you can with, win with ten Neymars. Well, you can't, right? But but you sit there and you say, I would take ten Neymars and try to get them down to how many how many can play on the field at one time because he's not chasing back. Yeah, he's not chasing back. It, yeah, right. right. back. And 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 I think that's what when you look for in a team, you're looking for. You can't have eleven. It, soccer is one of the ultimate team sports because you can't have eleven Neymars on the field. There's only one ball but you want players who are willing to win the ball. You need that player out there who's going to make the tackles. You make need the that difference, player, right? You need that player who you know, is, is good in the air. You need, you need different qualities on the field. Um, so that's what I'm, when I'm going out there and looking. And I'm looking, I'm looking for you know, a guy that's just not out there about himself. Because Do you think these guys – but everybody, everybody in a sense, it, is they're doing it for themselves. Everybody is, sure. right? Whether I score goals, whether I chase this kid back, because sure. if I chase this kid back, right, and I win the ball, what happens then? Then Mr. P says, good job. And then I feel good, right, because I did that, right? Sure. So I think it's – now, if you never said anything, I'd probably stop. Sure. Because you're getting that reward. So when sure. he does that run, he's getting that reward, right? So I think it is – the game itself is selfish, but how do you tie all that in, the selfishness, right, when you say selfishness, I don't mean where he doesn't care about anything else, uh -huh. right, about himself. He's going to get rewarded. When, if he gets rewarded somewhere, and that's his self, sure. right, he's, that's his self, he's getting rewarded. So do you, as a coach, say, okay, I'm going to reward different people. I meant different people with different rewards. Do you know what I mean? Like a Neymar, his, his main thing is he wants to score. He wants to have some flair. He wants to be the man. He'll create things. He'll make things happen. Okay, but what about well, I think at that level, and you you played professionally. I think at the professional level now, Neymar needs to be treated differently than. Do you than, think than, so? Yeah, I think I think in, in some respects, yeah. But now, obviously, when you're in the when as a coach, I treat Neymar a little bit different. But when we're all in the locker room, never. I'm not sitting there. Try, never. Right, it, it's, right. It's the team, but but I'm sure Neymar is getting some advantages that other people don't. And it's how you're handled. It's at at the pro level, and you were in the locker room, or nor than anybody I know. It's how do you handle on people, um, and, and people handle them. Man management. Than man right. management. Mm -hmm. than, than a college team where it's more of a, hey, let's go win this for the school. Let's go win this for the team. Um, you know, 10 years, you're coming back. Championship picture. Right, right. It's like high school. You know, you, you played on Calvert Hall teams, or they still talk about those teams. And even though it's years and years apart uh, away, there was still that brotherhood. Um, but at the level where Neymar is right now, it's, it's a business. It's an agent. You know that. You were in that locker room. But as a coach, how do you handle Neymar? You handle him different than you handle the guy who's, who's the midfielder, who's the workhorse. Um, but, but more importantly... What do you, you mean you want, by handling them different? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I, mean, I, just, I, I say handle them different in the aspect of your communication, your your one-on-one... -on -one, right, your, right. Well, there your, you go. One-on-one. Your one-on-one right, one -on -one, right. yeah. one -on -one conversations, your one-on-one... -on -one, meetings, your one-on-one, -on -one, you just, how are you handling him on the field? You're not going to let him get away with things um, that everybody else, that everybody else can't, can't, can't you, that's right. you'll get destroyed right. and you'll sure. never, you couldn't, you'll coach, lose the locker room, but you'll lose the locker room. And that's one of the most important things to do is never lose the locker room, which you know, um, and most people don't understand that. So at that level, you can't lose the locker room or you lose the team and then you lose a job. Um, but at the college level, it's different because um, it is more of a hey, we're a brotherhood. We live together. We're right, right. This. Roommates, we're so roommates, that's right. and we're you know we're here for four years. We're here to get our degree. We're here to be to do best we can. Um, but even that aspect, it's you know some kids are on the team that are happy to be on the team. Some want to play professionally, um, but you you make sure that they're all self motivated because mm -hmm. that's yeah, what that's you right, are. That's right, right. You know, are that, you self motivated? That goes to, back to, to the lot days. That goes that's back right. to the lot days. Are you self motivated to really get the best out of yourself? And I'm, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. Or if I'm sitting here comparing myself to Timmy Whitman, that's not a good move. Right, right. I need right, to compare right. myself to, to you, to me and, and what where you I want to go and what right. I can accomplish. So uh, I think that's the most important thing. So when I'm out there looking for a player to answer your initial question, I, I think it's more of, of uh, you know, uh, qu different qualities. You know, that the kid, hey, I, I've, I've seen players come to UMBC that were good players. Right, right. Who left the club. really good players. 
because they just had that little it factor that they just sure, needed which somebody. Is different, right? They need that's somebody right. to just say, "Come on, man, you're you're a good player." What you, no one's ever told me that. Um, but I've also seen guys who were told when they were 14 that they were the best in the country and thought that they were going to be pros, and um, by the time they were 18, they were done. Okay, know? so so if you see that, why is that happening though? I mean, so when I, you look at this player, right? For me, I'll go out and look, and I'll, I'll, I'll scout, not a scout, but look at a player. Uh, yeah, this kid's quite, quite talented, right? He's got some very good skill. He does this, he does that. But there's something I don't like. There's something I don't like. And that factor is I'm not going to go off, say, this guy's opinion, this person's opinion, oh, no. because, again, it's very subjective. How do it relates to you. Right, well, exactly, and that's where it's, again, subjective in my mind, right? But there's somebody else that has their own uh, reasoning. But when I look at a kid, and, and I can see a little bit of laziness, right? I can see a little bit of this or that. I, I honestly, I don't have time. Sure. I don't have time for it. I would work with anyone. I think I, as a coach, as all the coaches do, I think, uh, you think you could take that kid to the next level, sure. right? You hope to if you have yeah, the time, confidence. right? Yeah. And but when laziness comes in, that's a problem. I don't think I've ever, when I was coaching pro, I don't think even before that, I don't think I've ever yelled at a player. I mean, actually yelled at a player for doing something on the field. The times that I have gotten arguments is when they're lazy. I gave them a chance. Sure. Gave them another chance because they were either already on the team or something was going on, right? Uh, and then if that continued, well, then they were gone after a while. And it wasn't one of those hardcore types of and here's acts, the, but it was just, that's what I don't have, I can't tolerate here, that. Well, here's the question that, that you have to answer is you're dealing with players. When you're dealing with players at the pro level, it's a, it's a whole different level, right? You're sitting there, you're paying that guy, you got paid, and Timmy Whitman's either going to perform on that day, or that's right. he's not. No, that's right, and if yeah. he's in the lineup, or it's a whole spectrum of what's going to happen. And if Timmy Whitman is not on the field, um, and I don't want Timmy Whitman on the team, I'm going to cut Timmy Whitman. Sure. At the college level, it's a little you, harder, right? You can't cut. You're not. You can't say, well, you're not performing. Um, we just don't want you. You just can't do that. It, it's 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 against the NCAA rules. Right. High school, if the kids go into your school, it's probably more of a parental environment involvement with it. So there is a different spectrum of the pro to all the way down to the youth level. Why You know a lot of kids, and we both know kids that grew up in Hollandtown during your era or Little Flower that were really, really good players. Could have been great players. Could have been pros. If they, they could have been like you. But what was the reason? You know, maybe because maybe they, maybe they didn't enjoy the game anymore. Maybe all of a sudden there was outside influences. A big factor. That's huge. Right? right. Big That's factor. Right. Kids, instead of going down the park and practicing and playing, he hung out on a corner. And hung in, hanging out on a corner led to not doing what he's supposed to do in school slash getting in trouble. Um, so we both know many of But great there's tons players. of those kids. Tons of those kids. I'm you, it's, it's a Hall of Fame of kids. So we go back then. It's a Hall of Fame of kids who could have been, right. so, who've never right, been. But that's huge. That inch. Right is huge. That's a huge component. So why? What? Again, going back. So when you're looking at a kid, how long do you look at a kid? What certain qualities? Okay, you're saying well because he's skillful, he wants to go for it. He's got he's competitive, right? And that's his makeup, right? That's what you're looking for. But how how come there's so many damn kids that slip through? Not slip through, I should say, but go the other way. And when you're watching that, can you tell that, or do you really need to be around that kid enough? Well, I think it comes back to what you said. It's your confidence as a coach. I can tell you, as I sit here today, and not naming names, but there was a lot of kids that played for me at Essex that were tremendous players, great players. And if I would listen to what other people said, I would have, oh, you can't take him. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. He yeah. likes to fight. He is. He don't do this. <laughs> he don't, yeah, you know the kids. Sure. And 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 what great great kids they were, and they're great people today. Um, so, so you can't sit there constantly and listen to other people's opinions because if you did that, once again, it's how would I, how do I sit there perceive an, uh, and right, perceive a person? How do I, how do I handle that player? You know, where, where me and Timmy Whitman will, will take that player and he's going to have a good experience. Maybe the next person on the right side goes, oh man, he's this and he's that. I mean, I, I remember hearing stories of guys that were real, like 
all Americans for me and went to other schools and didn't last couldn't a week. Do it. Didn't couldn't last do a week. It. Right, right. And you went, are you kidding me? But, you know, that's, that's, that's the sad part. That's the game. That's, but that's the game. So, so I think really at what level are you coaching and how do you handle that player? How are you looking at the challenge of saying, and there's some kids, especially nowadays, where you just go, man, there's, there's nothing. There's, there's no way. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Um, and a lot of it is because of the game has changed. The whole complexion of the game has changed in the sense that there's people are paying now. There's paid coaches. Parents want their kids to play. Um, when I when I coached your team, we all got one car. We won the state funny. championship. Went the regional. We went the one car. Two parents. Three parents. I never got a dollar. I love doing it. You guys love playing. It was. You you left. We have practice twice a week. If you can beat it, right, that's right. Now now it's taking a bus. Now, yeah, too, now, now it's four times a week, five times a week. It's now it's you know every day on the internet. Man, we did this, we did that, we did and, and champions, and, all the and, champions and, and, on the internet. And, and the, oh and, my and, gosh! You know the coach is getting, uh, you know he's getting patted on the back for everything. Uh, it, it's just a it's a different game. It's and a it's different a diff era, and it's a different era. It's a different world and. You know, it, the good thing for all for all of us is that soccer is now here. Oh, and you know where we when we kept when, on saying ten when, more years, yeah, ten when, more and years, we ten were more young, years. And when we were young, we sat there, and if we ever seen a, a commercial with soccer, it would have been un, it was right. unheard of. That's now right. there's That's soccer right. commercials. There's soccer is part of the United States um, sports culture now. Um, it hasn't gotten to where we want it to be yet, but it's here. Um, it's just not a matter of what you're saying. Here's the question. How are we taking all these teams and all these players and now forming great teams and having a U.S. being a soccer culture on the field, not off the field? Because off the field, our teams, how many teams we have and no, people, right, making, right, right. people making living now on, on soccer, and I'm one of them. So uh, it, it's a big difference than when, when I was young or you were young, um, whenever it's just certain high school coaches or one, one or two college coaches at best. Um, that we're making the knowledgeable. Up. Yeah, I, t today, and we got uh, one time. I think I saw you at the convention, right? And this is changed the subject a little bit. Uh, Coach's convention is coming here. It's here in Baltimore. Is it in Baltimore? Back in January, Baltimore? Yeah. Uh, and I saw, and you said something. You were talking with my brother, and you said something about there's, there's no pro players. What's happened? Why there aren't any of the pro, pro players or national team players from Baltimore. And there's so many good players, supposedly, right? Supposedly. I'm just saying yeah. that. I don't know yeah. at that particular time. And then I came and I just said, well, it's the coaching. I just came back and I said, it's coaching and I left. And you started laughing and I left. Uh, so it goes to, again, with coaching is when you, when we coach, right? Is it more important to know skills, tactics, or man management? or all the above, right? Oh. So let's say we're under eight. I'll give you an example, under eight. What do you think about like an under eight age group? So what most, kind of coach should there the be? The most important thing for under eight is that he's learning the skills and he's enjoying it. Okay. And, and for me, and the tactical part will come eventually. But if, if you're stressing tactics over the fundamentals, then I, I think you have it all out of whack. I mean, I've seen that. I've seen, I've seen years ago, you know, where coach was, Stress and tactics with the eight-year-olds, and they were doing really well. Don't get me wrong, and everybody was raving about the eight-year-old kids. Um, but as watching those kids as they continued to evolve, mm -hmm. they became good at tactics, but technically they weren't they, good. They couldn't, do it. They couldn't right. dribble, right. so they could have never played professionally, and because they didn't have the skill. Now, they were really good when they're eight, nine, ten, but when they got to be fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, they weren't as good because now they were getting more athletes right, right, right. playing against them. So I, I think that, that that's the issue, one of the issues right there. You know, we have, a, we have a society now that we have to win today, and if I got I to gotta win at eight years old, and I'm the coach, and I'm going to show you, and I'm going to make them to Barcelona, and we're going to do this. Um, y you know, I, I think, obviously, you want to put a little tactics in it, because we all... Sure, we you're all, going this all, way, you're going that way, you're leave this too all, much. And we're all competitive people. We all like to think... You know, as a coach, know. if I took the, right. yeah, we're going to do our, you're going to watch our team, we're going to be, uh, you're going to watch us play. But at the end of the day, I think it's really about, um, you know, at what age you're teaching, at what skill level are they, what is your, what are you trying to get out of this? Are you getting paid a lot of money and you're coaching an eight-year-old team and they all want to win the state championship? So if they well, win, more they, people come to the club yeah. and then I, I stay around and I get yeah. paid more money, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily just about 
uh, developing these kids. It's more about the winning aspect. Yeah. You want to win when you go. Oh. That's the whole intention. Yeah. Uh, when you're, when I was uh, a director at this one club, and I said, well, yeah, we well, kids just want to have fun. We just want to, absolutely you want to have fun. But at the same time, we want to win. Oh, Why yeah. are you putting them into a sport if you're not going to win? No, don't yeah. keep goals. Yeah. Don't keep score, right? No, I'm not. The whole player. idea is this team tries to put it in there. This team tries to put it in here. And so you want to try to win, but I understand that's not the main objective is that at, at any cost. So that's, I think, sometimes the problem. Because if I win, I look good. I've, I'm on Facebook. Now, this club wants me. This club wants me. I keep my kids around. I get paid more money. And I think that's a problem. What if a club, if I developed a young player, right, and I could sell him for $3 million? Oh, the big difference. What would happen then? Oh, the now you would develop, right? Yeah. Argentina, Brazil, yeah. right? Uh, Ajax, so, uh, the Dutch League. They, they develop these kids, yeah. right? And they sell them. They sell them. They sell them, right? Here, we'd get nothing for it. So the only way you're getting paid is through the parents. And right now, that's a, that's a huge problem, okay? We're, we're going we're gonna to take a little break right now, uh, and we'll get back. I'd like to welcome one of our sponsors, Matthew's Pizza. Matthew's Pizza has been recognized for the last 30 years as one of the top pizzas in the country by USA Today, by the Washington Post, New York Times, Travel Channel, you name it. There's an, a dish he has, it's called the Leroy. It's mozzarella, it's tomatoes, it's artichokes, it's olives. Uh, it's got brilliant food. Matthew's Pizza is located at 3131 Eastern Avenue in Highland Town. If you don't know about it now, Go down there and check it out. If you do know about it, go back down. Back down. Action. Welcome back to the Soccer Espresso Show. Pete. Salute. Again. Another one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be flying today. My wife is going to love me at home. She's just going to she constantly ignore me. She's going to close the door. She loves you no matter what. That's true. Yeah, let me tell you. It was back in 1929. It was a cold day, Pete. But... I it was love at first sight. Uh, <laughs> okay. I was, oh, I remember when he, oh, that's a whole uh, That's another hour show. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Pete, and this is off subject, okay? Rapino and the World Cup. Give me something. Else. What do you, again, I got personal opinions about it. Let's see here what you have. Well, I'm, I, uh, I have st some strong opinions because I think, First of all, the team did fantastic, mm. and uh, it, they were fun to watch. And uh, you know, it, it's it's you know, for her to uh, she has the right to do what she she wants to do as far as uh, come on, you're not you as know. fluid, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's well, fluid right now. Well, I can see yeah, there's well, a little. Well, because I think that for her not to <laughs> for her not to stand there and and salute. The national anthem. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Okay, I you're I, for that, I'm, right? I'm, you know, you put your hand, especially on your national team. You're representing the country. You put your hand on your heart. Um, I'm even more. I, I think what I was obviously bothered by. I'm bothered by that, but I'm also bothered by when they scored goals. Um, you didn't like that. To nothing. I think that there's a point. I would not allow okay. that on my team. Um, I think that if you're a first-time goal scorer and you're in the World Cup, celebrate. Maybe celebrate. Right. I'm okay. fine. Don't let. But, you know, you got four or five goals. Come on, you score four or five goals in a game. I've scored it's four old. or five goals in a game. I'm not celebrating after we're beating a team. I don't even want to play. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's I don't even and want to normally play a coach would take you out. That's a whole other topic. Um, but I just feel like at that point, it's time to just stop. And uh, you know, Okay, don't. devil's advocate here, right? All right. She has a platform, or they have a platform. Professional athletes have a platform. They're going to use that platform, right, uh, in whatever way they're allowed to do. So she sees a platform, and, and I don't know the reason. I don't know the real reasons. I don't know her background that well, uh, but she's using this platform, right? And U.S. has the ability to shut that down, the U.S. team, national team, right? Uh, they either say, if you do it, you don't play. Right? Or we're going to allow you. Right? Or the team, same with the team. The coach can do the same thing. So do you blame her or do you blame the other people for allowing this? Because 
if I'm at a job and the job say, states you cannot do A, B, and C, and I do it, what happens? They get rid of me. They get rid of you. Right. But if they allow me to play within that, that frame, right, then what's, am I at fault? May, you may not agree with what I'm saying, and a lot of people don't, right? But do you blame her or do you bl blame the uh, people above her? Well, I think the people above her want her to play. And they're, they're looking at it. At strictly, any cost? And they're looking at it strictly. Well, obviously, either that or they have no problem with what she did. And, you know, look, it's 2019. You said people have a platform. Um, I come from a, uh, from a time and, and era where um, you didn't use, I never used sports as a platform. Right, no. Unfortunately. Right. Um, so, once again, it goes back to, for me. I, I was brought up on the team aspect of soccer and mm. sports. Mm. Teams win championships, not individual players. You gotta have great individual players sure. to win championships. To work within that team you know structure, that. right? Um, so, so for one player to do something um, because they have strong, she can have a strong conviction about it, and I understand that. And once again, she has the right to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you're asking me my opinion of it, and that's my opinion of it. But she has the right to do it. Uh, doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Sure. It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean, and now the people who run U.S. soccer, um, that's a whole different topic because why are they, why are they, are or not getting involved? Maybe they're sitting here and answering the same question, being asked the same question, and someone saying she has the right to do that, um, um, and they let I it I think go. it's a political, it's a yeah. touchy situation sure. at the, sure. the, this time of, sure. in the world, and I don't think they want to touch that, yeah, in a sense. And I don't think the coach wants to touch that. Uh, I don't know about the players, my only concern was, do I like it? No. Yeah. I don't like it. I, I don't watch the game for that, sure. right? I watch the game. I, I want to get away from everything else. I want to enjoy this game. Sure. I don't need all that, right? I can get that every day on CNN or wherever it sure. is. Uh, you know, listen to Trump, listen to arguments for, against. I mean, it's constant. I don't look for that. I don't need that, from my personal opinion. Uh, and then what about the other players on that team, is she taken away? This is my concern, and this we do not we do not know. I do not know. Uh, so you got all these other players that make up a, a team, and she's the one that's getting all the notoriety for good or bad, right? What about the team? We've got other things we got to do, but obviously they won. But are they behind her? Are there more people that want to do that and letting her lead? This we don't know, but what's going on in the locker room? Yeah, so know. is the coach saying, great, you do whatever you have to do at the expense of everybody else? No, I don't think so. I don't know that. So this is... Uh, I think, I think answers, some answers will come out years from now, you know, how the locker room was. Obviously, they looked like they were a very united group. They were very uh, focused on winning a championship, a world, a world championship. Um, you know, when you train all those years and you're that close and you're that good, um, you know, they want to win a world championship and they did it. And they played unbelievable soccer. Um, as far as her and some of the other, um, what happened, you know, I, I think uh, even from a coach's standpoint, we don't know what the, their coach. That's the, right, what's know, going on in that I locker room? Know, I don't know what went on in the locker room. I don't know what was said to her. I don't know if she. Uh, if the coach was 100% behind it, um, surely I think players, some players, and you know, you've been around locker room. Those guys probably did something when you were playing for the Blast who you had this, it was a really good player and you needed to support them, but you weren't happy with what was going on, but you had to go out there and play. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now, years later, if it was brought up to you, you probably you could, say something, maybe. could say it. But mm -hmm. back then, you just, for the good of the team. Uh, so, you know, you never, we'll never know. Um, and I, I you know, it's, but as a coach, wouldn't you nip that in the bud then? If that is disrupting your team, and your team is now, you go out, you got to go out in the field and play regardless, right? So we're saying regardless. So if we took that factor out of it, it'd be a lot easier to go out and play. Maybe sure. I don't know. Or well, I, I, are they I, all behind? I it? guess the question, the the question I have is, um, we can't sit here and say how much it disrupted the team because they want it, and I'm right. sure if they wouldn't have wanted. Um, there would have been, you know, some more people saying, well, this was disruptive or that was disruptive. That's right, that's right. And that happens. I mean, that happens in every sport. You know, you win the Super Bowl, um, whatever problems you might have had during the year are, are, are over with. But how much better could they, could they be? Yeah. If that, I'm not saying, maybe that did unite them. Maybe if it is a problem yeah. and they, they got the problem out of the way, then they could have been that much better and still won it, but I'm been that I'm much sure better. They must have had, I'm sure they've had a lot of talks about it. I'm sure they had a lot of meetings about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there was a, a, the leaders of the team surely went out and said, look, no, no matter what, 
we're walking out on this field and we're together and we're representing the United States and we're going to play and we're going to, you, you know, mm -hmm. this, as, as a leader of a team. Um, so I think you don't want to, to have this false feeling of where we're divided um, no matter what. Whether I disagree or agree with you uh, as, a, as what you're doing, uh, for the most part, we walk on the field and we're together, we're wearing the right. same color, we're going right, to play. Right. Now, if we don't win and you become an issue, uh, it's probably going to be brought up. But if we win... And, it's going to be magnified, right? Yeah, be magnified. And mm -hmm. if we win, it probably more or less wouldn't be brought up um, and we're going to celebrate. Forgot and, that's right. That's and, right. And that's probably, what, you know, that's where we are today, right? It's over. She's done. She's forgotten. Um, she got her time. And, you know, what, what, what happens moving forward? Um, I just, from the United States standpoint, I'm, I'm just, you know, you're representing your country. Just put your hand on your foot. And... Uh, and that's what I would have done. Equal pay. What do you think about equal pay? Equal pay, I, I think, once again, a hot topic, man. You're trying to you, get a little more. No, uh, I, I don't yeah. think, I don't know no, why. Well, here, I don't know why what, it's what, a, a what, hot what, topic. What? Well, equal well, pay is well, here's, ridiculous. Here's, I think it should be, here, here's, no matter what. Here's the answer from, from me. Um, you should get paid equal pay. I don't want, I don't want, but what income are you bringing in? That's it. I guess that's the question. Equal pay, they're, they're great to watch and they're, they're where they are. Um, I think, I think once again, um, how, how much income are you bringing in? How, to, how is sure. it being divvied out? That's right. Um, and, and, and that's the answer. But, but to sit here to say, are you against equal pay? No. Of course I not. Of course I mean, not. man or woman, I don't care what it is. Sure. Right? It should make no difference whatsoever. Now, if the revenue is equal, well, then they get equal pay, right? It's that simple, I would sure. think. I don't know how else, why that's even a subject, well, but I don't know the ins and outs of it all exactly. Now, you're talking about worldwide, it's not even close, not right? Even close. The men, it's, not, it's not even close. So if I have a business, right, again, we go back, if I have a business and I'm bringing in X, you're bringing in uh, $100 from me. She's bringing in $50 from me. And you get commission. Sure. Uh, the, you're going to get what is $100 gets more commission than the $50 gets, uh, gets. So that's where I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, somebody's got to look into that, which they're trying to do. And if they're bringing in the same revenue or even more, the women should actually absolutely get a piece of that pie. I don't know. This is, again, well, I don't know I any other way around it. Once again, I think that, that obviously we don't have the answer to that um, on the surface. Yeah, a woman does. We've got to get job. somebody. For those answers, do you have anybody, Morgan? No. Yeah, but I think more importantly, it's like the money that you're making on this show. Oh, right? you know what and, I can do with this? The money that you're making. I can and, get another and, one of these. Yeah, it should be equal pay to another show right. that, that they, they do. Right, but what if I bring in more revenue? Then I get that, right? You get the money. That's what we're that's, that's what we're hoping. Pete, one time I told you he was talking on one of these shows, these podcasts, for two hours straight. Was it two hours? No. I'm telling you, you were in a bathtub when they were talking. Hour and a half. Yes, you were in a bathtub. Hour and a half. Okay, it was an hour and a half. I turned it on, and I'm like, that's a piece quite good here, right? I'm listening, I'm listening. Morgan, we He's still you. listening. Morgan, keep this going. And then I went and got dinner, made love to my wife, came oh. back, and he was still, oh, uh, granted, that was only two minutes, though. That was, that, was only, <laughs> that was only two minutes, right, the, the eating part. So then I come back, and Pete's still going on. I, did you take a breath? Did you? I don't know what happened. What? Morgan, <laughs> this was the greatest the thing. thing. He I, was done Morgan. for the rest. Uh, he couldn't do any more shows after that. Morgan, he needed to we, get. We got a 32 share that day. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, we, 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 he had to get fed intravenously. He was out. He went to the hospital. They had a, a one of those, what do you call it? Boom. EDs? Oh, What's that boots. called? EDs? Now that's something. That's erection oh dysfunction. No, God. that's not it. <laughs> Morgan. Morgan. Well, we got to get <laughs> Morgan on Morgan, there. Morgan, make this the last three minutes. You know okay. you're cutting this out. Okay, next. Every, every mention of Morgan. <laughs> Question. Take three. <laughs> Let show. Question. What do you think of Trump? Kid, what's your religious background? He doesn't want to answer any of the important questions, but that's okay. Since Pete doesn't want to answer any important questions, we're going to end this segment. Uh, great segment. Pete surprised me. He answered a lot of questions I didn't think he was going to. It's hard to get guests because they're afraid uh, maybe what I'll do or what I'll say. 
brilliant to have him here. I got to have you back again, though, Pete, because we're not even close. I, we haven't touched the surface. I enjoyed being on your first show. Uh, I think this is going to be a big hit. Oh, and, you're uh, huge. We're and, talking and huge. I, and I think uh, I can't wait to see what the ratings oh. are when they come out. You got ratings Thanks. yet, Morgan? Oh, it's not out yet. Okay. Overnight.